My name is Bruce Raymond Wright. I'm going to share with you a chapter from my latest book, Living Majestically, An Elephant's Guide. This particular chapter is called The Majestification of Sarah. This is the story of one woman's journey from a state of less significance into a state of higher being, greater significance, fulfillment, joy, purpose, and bliss. And in order to really introduce the chapter, I want to make sure that I cover some really important contextual ground. In order for this chapter to be available to me and to you and to the rest of the world, we, we must first take a look at the word equanimity. Early in my career, I learned that if you can get yourself into a state of equanimity, a state of calm, regardless of what is going on around you, that everything about your experience becomes easier and better than it otherwise would be. And who amongst us has not been in a circumstance where there's been a great deal of negative energy, volatility, or hostility? And whenever you find that one person who just seems to be calm in the face of all of that, we tend to look to that person for guidance and um, to feed off of that sense of calm to move us to a higher and better place. Equanimity is a higher state of consciousness, maybe the highest state of consciousness that human beings can experience. It's to be in a state of calm, to be in the flow, regardless of how difficult the circumstances are around you. Learning to put yourself in such a state of being and to sustain it even when the world seems to be going against you is one of the most valuable things that anybody can learn. And in this next story, you're going to see how important equanimity is. Had I not been able to get into this state of being and to sustain it, this story would not be available to the world. The experience that we all had that day would not have been available to that audience. And I think by the time we're finished, you'll see how important it is to get into and sustain that state of consciousness. When I first met Sarah, she was a very successful business executive at a Fortune 500 company, financial services company, and she was the epitome of success. I was down in Newport Beach, California, delivering a four-day conference. The topic was macro strategic planning, your life and your business. We had about 85 people in the audience, an interesting mix of financial advisors, lawyers, accountants, investment bankers, trust officers, business people of all varieties, shapes and sizes, and pretty much every racial background, cultural background, religious background, and socioeconomic profile was there in the room. It's one of the things I love most about the work that I do. I get to work with an amazing array of people. And here we were in the second day of the conference. Imagine a long rectangular room and I'm up in the front of the room standing behind the podium and to the le my left side of the room there are two doors one right up in front and outside that door there's a big sign and it says please use the other doors and there's an arrow pointing in that direction and everybody knows by the second day of the conference that they should come in through that back door however I'm about 20 minutes into the second day of the the conference and I feel like I'm really on a roll. And I'm really talking about how to envision what your ideal life and perfect calendar would really be like and how that might be different than the life that you're living right now. And just as I'm really into this conversation, right here at the door next to me, I hear the door rattling and pretty soon the door opens up and in walks Sarah. And she comes in dragging a little carry-on piece of luggage with her, a little, it's on wheels, and she's dragging it in, and she just kind of walks in front of the audience, and she stops right in front of me, and she looks at me and says, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. 
<laughs> of course, she's interrupting the entire meeting. She makes her way over to the far side of the room, second row, and she proceeds to open up more Velcro devices than I thought it was possible for any person to have. And you know, that sound that Velcro makes, it's so obvious and so disruptive. She proceeds to take her laptop out and set it up on the desk and plug it into the wall. And, and she, while she's doing this, I'm trying to continue with my train of thought. And I got to say, it was pretty disruptive. But I made my way through it. And I was feeling pretty good about how everything was going. And I said to the audience, so being able to envision what you want next with great clarity is critically important. Ambiguity is your biggest enemy here. What you want is the best clarity that you can achieve so that you know exactly why you want what you want, when you want it, and then we can build an entire action plan around how to get from where you are to where you want to be. Starts with that vision, that clarity of vision. And the why needs to be more powerful than any of the roadblocks, adversities, or restraints that are, that are inevitably going to show up in your life. And with that, Sarah said, just kind of raising her hand and at the same time just interrupting the flow, and she said, so Bruce, when are you going to tell this audience about how you destroyed my life? And she said it with a pretty hostile tone. I mean, it was really disruptive. But you know, it's important to point out that earlier that day and every single day, I start off with meditation and prayer. And I really contemplate this and I ask for divine influence and divine support in this to be in the moment, to be in the flow, and to allow divine inspiration and intervention to come upon me and those that I'm interacting with. And in order to honor that request, you just got to put yourself in this state of being where you're calm, cool, and collected and you just take what comes to you. So here I was confronted with this question that could only be described as disruptive. When are you going to tell this audience how you destroyed my life? And I looked at her and I said, Sarah, I wasn't planning on talking about that because, well, I wasn't aware that I had destroyed your life. Maybe you'd like to tell the audience how I destroyed your life. She said, well, I would like to do that. And so she got a hold of a microphone, like as if she even needed one, and she proceeded to tell the story. She said, a couple of years ago, I was at one of our company's big conferences. This one was in Scottsdale, Arizona. And as usual, I was one of the featured speakers, and I was a panelist on a couple of different panels. And, you know, the company liked to put me out there front and center as sort of the, you know, an example of success. And I had all the trappings of success. I had the big office with the big windows looking out over the city. I had a whole staff of people to support me. I was producing at a really high level. And it looked like I was on top of the world. But I heard Bruce's speech. And he talked about getting into this ideal life, this perfect calendar and shifting from the life that we had into the life that we really truly desired, but we probably didn't even know how to articulate, let alone how to make it happen. And when the conference was over, I approached Bruce and I said, um, I'd really, really like to talk to you about this some more. When can we get together? And he said, well, actually, I'm catching a flight out of here and I got to get to the airport. And it turned out that we were on the same flight. Southwest Airlines, so it was easy for us to get seats together. And all the way back to Los Angeles, we talked about my situation. And I wasn't finished talking with him when I got on the ground, so I offered to give him a ride home. And he lives out in the boondocks in Simi Valley, California. It was way out of my way, but I really, really wanted to get as much information as I could. We got in my car and we drove to Simi Valley, and all the way I asked him questions and 
talked with him about these issues and the restraining factors and all the reasons why I couldn't let go of the life that I had, why I couldn't change my thinking, why I couldn't change my behavior. And by the time I dropped him off, I decided I was going to was going to hire his company and get mentored through this process because I really knew that the path that I was on, however successful it appeared to be on the surface, was destroying me. It was destroying my family. So I hired his company and I went through this mentored consulting process. I went through the macro strategic planning process that we're all learning more about today. And uh, as I work with Bruce face to face, we went over every single one of my restraining factors and all the adversities and all the people and all the circumstances that seemed to be conspiring to hold me right where I was. And over the next several months, I resigned from my position at that big company and I formed my own company. I sold my big house and I bought a smaller house. I simplified my life and I was deathly afraid of making less money. But Bruce assured me that if I learned how to interact with my clients at a higher and more meaningful level, if I was able to help them in a deeper and profound way, that my income actually would go up rather than down and that if I formed my own company, all of the people who are most interested in working with an advisor that could help them get someplace really special would come with me. They would follow me and they would refer some of their friends to me and I could actually increase the quality of my client base and the quality of my relationships with my clients in making this transformation. And I was just I guess desperate enough that I was willing to take the chance. I realized that I was living my ideal life in perfect calendar little by little, step by step, one move at a time, one piece at a time. I was replacing the thinking, the behaviors, the activities, the way of being that got me the results that I, that I had at the beginning. And that in order to move into the life that I really truly desired, I literally had to destroy the life that I had. I couldn't possibly think of a more powerful testimony of what the process was like. Uh, it's a journey with adversity and challenges and difficulties. Now she went into some detail that I didn't cover about some of the resistance and some of the adversities that she had to push through or she had to overcome. And so many times it was tempting for her to say, this person or that person is stopping me or slowing me down or restraining me. And every time she would do that, I would reconnect her to the reality that those other people couldn't stop her. It was only how she thought about those people and how she thought about the relationship and what she thought about herself that could restrain her. I really believe that because she was a person of such courage and tenacity, she was able to get past all the barriers and get to that result, that she deserved all of the credit. And I shared that with the audience and then we took a break. And I got to say, it was one of these great and wonderful experiences for everybody in the audience and for me as well. I couldn't have predicted it at the beginning of the day, but had I become defensive or had I become frightened and decided to take a recess, we probably never would have had that kind of experience and I wouldn't have this chapter for my book. I wouldn't have the story to help you understand that if you want to majestify your life, you can do it incrementally in bits and pieces by replacing thoughts, beliefs, behaviors, which are separating you right now from the more powerful and majestic life that awaits you just as soon as you put yourself in alignment with it. All of Sarah's shifts really occurred 
right between her ears and in her heart before she manifested them in reality. She is a person of great courage and great tenacity. And that's why she got where she wanted to go. But had I not been living in a state of equanimity at the time when this amazing opportunity and this fantastic story became available to everybody in the audience, we would have lost it. Sometimes the greatest and most wonderful experiences are just right there waiting for us and we're separated from them because of our fear and our anxiety, our defensiveness, our ego. These are the kinds of things that restrain us and keep us from experiencing some of the greatest blessings that we could ever come to know. That's the story of the majestification of Sarah and it's also an example of how living in equanimity for me personally wasn't just beneficial to me but also for all of the people around me. And it's interesting if you were to talk to Sarah today I think she would tell you that as she learned to move herself from living in a state of fear and anxiety and ego and into a state of flow, a state of equanimity, a state of calmness, that all kinds of synchronistic, amazing and wonderful opportunities showed up in her life. New relationships, new opportunities, new projects that she never could have imagined and that could not have been available to her in her prior state of being suddenly became available to her. These are the kinds of things which are invisible to us in one state of mind or state of being but become crystal clear and readily available to us as we shift ourselves into alignment with them. It is my hope that you can take away from the story several key components that you will apply immediately in your life, in your business, and in your relationships. Thank you for watching.